Hello and welcome to Audio Adventures. This is a D&D 5th edition podcast that is made by friends, with friends, and for friends. And if you clicked on us, buckle up. It's going to be a crazy magic carpet ride for you and me. This podcast is used by my nerdy friends and I to escape our lives for a time and act out some pretty ridiculous scenarios. And we are so glad to have you here. A couple things before we start. Our group loves the rule of cool, so I'm sure we will get rules wrong. So if we do, please feel free to tell us in a kind fashion down in the comments. Also, if you want to contribute to the fantastical world of Seblos where this campaign takes place, please make a comment and you may be seeing that kobold cleric in the very near future, along with your name in the show as well. Now, please grab a seat and some popcorn and let's meet our wandering vanguard. Audio Adventures is a D&D 5th edition homebrewed podcast and may deal with triggering themes at times. Viewer discretion is advised. Trigger warnings can be found in the description. Previously on The Wandering Vanguard. Oh, um, come in. Hey, so I had a breakthrough. You want to go shopping? I think I can make the magic hat to read your mind. Uh, to what? Okay, we're going shopping. I walk over and I just grab his arm and I start pulling him up the doors. You look around, Ekman is nowhere to be seen. Hey, where are you at? We're, uh, they're talking about going out shopping and wanted uh, you to come along if you wanted to. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be sure to find you sometime. Hello and welcome to Proper Postures. I'm Valkyrie. Uh, how can I help all of you today? I need to buy lots of hats that are very good for conducting magic. Have you heard of the Wandering Vanguard on the uh, the old sky, sky net? I didn't want to say anything, but uh, one could call us the Wandering Vanguard. She like freezes. I see. Okay, let's uh, keep a low profile, guys. Um... And you look over to the right, and you see a very familiar Furbolg sitting behind the counter. You, you came back to Aradora, huh? I'm not in Aradora. Are we in Aradora right now? I mean, that's where my shop is. What are we talking about? That is where we begin. I- I'm forgettable. My name is Pinafide or Tycooly. Pinafide. Wait. I'm, you can call me Paul, remember? Yeah. I sold your yeah. friend Tavis over there, uh, his, his, uh, rug. <gasps> and boots. Right. Oh, and boots. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, f- forgive me. I was like, how could I forget, uh, someone as, a, a, as extravagant as you? <laughs> well, I just rid here on my broom. Uh, I see that you just did business with Vernie. Do you want to do business with me now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what you telling me? Let's see what you got. Do you have any rings? <laughs> <laughs> Anything shiny? <laughs> One ring to rule them all. Hmm. I might have rings, but as you remember, this bag of holding randomly generates things. Oh, right, 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 right. So, maybe. What do we got? What? What weird thing do you got for us today? Here, here, I, I got this. And I put my portable hole in the ground. Okay, now put the bag in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to. I know exactly what that bag does. Or the oh. hole does. That's sad. Go yeah. hold and I put it in my pocket. <laughs> Did it ruin I'm some guy's but Dang it. All right. Uh, well, let's see. Uh... Hmm. And he starts pulling out some, like one thing, and you hear jing 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 as he starts pulling, and you see shackles come out. <sighs> hmm. These are interesting. Do they do anything? Do you know if they do anything, or is it just we just gotta kind of figure it out? Oh, I know what they do when I pull them out. Okay, uh, they're called cool. dimensional shackles. Oh boy. May I ask what that means? 
You can use an action to place these shackles on an incapacitated creature. The shackles are just to fit a creature to small, of large, or small size. Uh, and prevent a creature bound by them from using any method of extra-dimensional movement. Oh! <laughs> Brings back memories, huh? Yes. I have those. All right. And he puts them on the ground. He puts them on a cl- uh, table close by. Those are pretty weird. I wonder why those were generated. Anyways. Oh, by the way, when when my my poor when my hole was out, I left the 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 paper boat in it. Okay. So is this your bag of holding now? Yes. <laughs> For now. Cool. Uh, you have storage your your boat. And he starts pulling them out. Uh, you start you see two uh, braziers um, that are bronze in color and a little nicked and scarred in places, but look to be pretty okay. And these uh, give you a plus two bonus to your AC if you're wearing no armor and using no shield. Puts those on the table. Are they cursed? No. I don't do the curses like my brother does. As much. That, that, that explains a lot. Alright. <laughs> How expensive are they? I'm a little more expensive because I don't do the curses, so I'd probably do about 150. Well, that is more expensive. What else you got? Or, or you can talk me down because I also like a good game of haggling. I could do that, or I could see what else you have first. That's fair. Let me just reach. And he reaches in his law, his left hand, which has the long fingernails for him. And he pulls out a long cloak that just seems that is uh, purple and shiny and looks a little leathery. Um, He says, this is called the cloak of the bat. While you're wearing the cloak, you have an advantage on dexterity stealth checks. In an area of dim light or darkness, you can grip the edges of the cloak with both hands and use it to fly at a speed of 40 feet. If you ever fail to grip the cloak's edges while flying in this way, you are are no longer in dim light or darkness. You will probably fall to your death. But it's fun. How much is that one? Uh, I I could be talked down. Or given a price. I don't really care for this one. This one seems interesting. Hmm. Plus, I'm a little crazy, like my brother. Two gold. Hmm, a little bit more than that. Three gold. One. Eight. Hmm. If you're going to do that, I'm going to say about 500. Oh. Oh, you said 20? You're actually trying to haggle yeah. here? All right. Uh, I'd give it to you for 20. I'll give you 30. Oh, it is sold. And he hands Red Guest the cloak. You can now put down, you have a cloak of the bat. Um, And you can also, while wearing the cloak in a dim area of light or darkness, you can use your action to cast Polymorph on yourself, transforming into a bat. While you're in the form of a bat, you retain your intelligence, wisdom, charisma scores, and the cloak can't be used this way until the next dawn. So it's a every day you can do that. Do that yeah. One so oh. just one time. But it doesn't say that you, it doesn't say that you can polymorph back. <laughs> Who's to say? Who's we'll to have say? to pull up a, another <laughs> a better explanation of it. Um, but he says, ah, one more. Let's see. Let's see. And he uh. He starts reaching in um, the bag again, and he's like, oh, it's another cloak. And he pulls out this one, and he's this one is white, and every time it moves, it refracts the light in a different way. Uh. That makes you, like, like, that makes you, like, one moment he, like, moves it, and you, like, you didn't see him, and another moment he's back. Like, it's weird. This one's called 
The Cloak of Displacement. While you wear this cloak, it projects an illusion that makes you to appear to be standing in a place near your actual location, causing any creature to have disadvantage on attack rules against you. If you take damage, the, proper, the property cease, ceases to function until the start of your next turn. This property is suppressed while you're incapacitated, restrained, or otherwise unable to move. How much are you looking for that one? Give me a price. 45 gold. Hmm. That is a fair price. I start counting out the 45 gold to hand over to him. Right. And he hands you the cloak of displacement. Yes, it'll go so well with my suit. It will. Yes. And uh, that's about it for uh, everything else. Uh, I still have that dimensional shackles and the braces of defense, and I can be talked down on the 150. 75. Maybe. But no, I've been selling you a lot. Do you, are you sure you want all of this, or you don't want your other friends to have anything else? They're not offering to buy anything, so... I figured. That is fair. If you want to give me 75 gold. Sure. When he hands you the bracers of defense. All right. I. Let's let's do maths. Quick maths. Six minus 75. All right. Bracers of defense. That's all I have, unless you want to buy the dimensional shackles. Hmm. I don't think I'm... I'm... I'm in need of anything like that today. Thank you, though. It was a pleasure doing business these, with you, sir. Well, I thank you. I think I'll just take these shackles to the smut shop. Sell them over there. <sighs> Hear that right? <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna even ask. Anyways, and he puts the shackles back into the bag. Have a nice day, Vernie. You and me. Tacos. And then he grabs his broom and he flies out of the room. Uh, okay, let's head over to the blacksmith, see if we can find, uh, or see if your dad's still there. Then we can, uh, kind of call. Yes, what? Call it a night. Bernie says, Goodbye! Come back tomorrow. I will have all new things to sell. Bye, Bernie. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, friends. Hey there, everyone. I thought I would take this opportunity in our show to do some catching up. Some announcer some talkies, even. Just to remind you all of our social medias, you can find us on Twitter, Audio Adventures at the username Audio Adventure 2. Why two, you ask? Well, number one was taken. <laughs> Ay. We are also on Facebook and Instagram. We have also set up a Ko fi. We had a couple comments made at us about being able to support us a bit with that good green juice that the world just seems to run on. So, if you're feeling generous towards us, that would be one of the avenues to help us grow and to encourage us as the artist as well. Another avenue to help us thrive and grow is to share and tell your friends about us. We are one of the many, many, many D&D podcasts out there. So we are ecstatic whenever someone wants to listen to us play D&D. We don't spend any money to advertise this show, so your support means that much more to us. And since there are more of us now, here is our wandering vanguard. Uh, well, I am Zach, and I will be playing Tabis, who is an Eldrin sorcerer. The only interesting fact that I can think of for him is that his last name is just, uh, Elvish for Owl, because he likes owls. I'm Trevor. Uh, I'm playing 
the character uh, Nyx hyphen with hyphen burning hyphen red hyphen eyes. Nyx with burning red eyes. Uh, and his last name is Bright. Um, he was born into a noble family, hence the actual last name. As he's a changeling artifice. Changelings don't normally have last names, they normally just have hyphenated names. Hello there. My name is Tibral Darrow. I am a uh, half-elf man from the town of Owlton. I am what you might call a soul knife. And before I get too far, let me explain what a soul knife is. A soul knife is someone who can summon a weapon that is bound to our soul. I used to have a long sword like my father, but now it's a uh, glaive with etchings of flowers throughout the whole thing. Along with being able to uh, summon the glaive, I am able to use my mind to connect to the soul of others, to communicate and help in battle. Our friend Toom, uh, not being able to speak, but I'm able to connect to a soul and kind of get a general idea of what he's thinking and what he would say. Along with all that, my mom always said I had a, uh, a golden glow to me, which I didn't really understand until now to be literal. Our soul's power shows through uh, our bodies as different colors. I've never met another soul knife besides my father, so I don't know where he learned it. My mom and I lived in a town called Allerton, but before I get too very much into that, my mom was a very sick woman. We lost a lot of money and resources trying to find a cure, but nothing worked. My father left to find something to help her, and he never returned. That was when I was eight. I'm 25 now. Once I became a teen, I started working at the local apothecary. My father was a medic, master with blades and medicine, um, and I wanted to be like that. Medicine and plants, um, it's always been fascinating to me. I have my dad's journal here, and one day while looking through, I, I found something that I wasn't really expecting. I found out the book was only half built. But the last page talked about this plant called the Golden Snapdragon. But it apparently it's a plant of legend that can cure any known disease. But the other thing, the only other thing that's on these pages are two places, Restriston and Chanbu. And I think this is where he thought they were. Which makes sense with how rare it is. That'd be in two of the hardest countries to get into. I haven't been to either of these places, but it's the only lead I got. And one day we were uh, raided by goblins. And then this a group of adventurers came up. They helped uh, clear the goblins away, and they even helped save save a lot of people that day. They invited me to come along on the adventure. This is the only chance I had to find my dad. But before I left, my mom gave me a couple things. But she pulled out a cape, a long purple cape with two golden polydrons on the side. It fit perfectly, like it was made to fit me. Then she also gave me her wedding ring. Told me to find if I find dad, tell him to get his butt home. Now I have three, three things I have to do. I have to find my dad, find the golden snapdragon, and make it home alive. Because if I don't, my mother will kill me. So my name's Emma, <laughs> and I'm gonna explain to you what my character looks like and everything because he actually can't talk. <laughs> so his name is Toon. He is a Warforged Necromancer, and he kind of got his voice box ripped out, and so he can't speak. All he does is screech occasionally. He does write in a little notebook, so that's how he communicates most of the time. And um, he is covered in cherry blossoms, and he has a giant gash in the middle of his torso where he hides his familiar talent and some skulls and some other miscellaneous things. Um, and yeah, he is silver um, with two green bands around each arm and he has blue eyes. And that's pretty much it. My name is Redcast. I am but a simple tabaxi who lives within others' means. I never knew my parents, but the Order of the Ghost Slayers made up for that. They taught me how to fight with honor as one of their esteemed blood hunters. My mercenary work taught me how to value my own life. These two paths have coiled into a journey of broken love and pointless purchases, where I now find myself with the Wandering Vanguard. I have no doubt they will be able to help me on my current mission. And I think that's about it. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And the next one will be up for all of you next Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See ya!
And you guys leave, and the shop's door closes behind you, and then backs up about 15 feet. <laughs> it's like, oh, we got you in there. <laughs> By the way, Tibro, do you want that boat? Uh, no, not particularly. I was just thinking it might be useful for the party. That's like that was the only reason I was thinking about it. Oh yeah, I'll I'll just leave it in the hole then. Oh, sounds good. To the blacksmith. To the smithy. All of you loaded up with your uh, uh, cursed and non-cursed magical items. Uh, man, this episode. You guys are so loaded. I've bought way too much. I have too much money. <laughs> <laughs> when you have like 5,000 gold. Until I buy my nice new suit, then I won't have any money. Yes. I was about to say, do you, not, do you have money to buy the suit? I do. Okay. Very carefully. <laughs> That's why Divro hasn't bought anything, because he's like, I still got to pay for food. <laughs> all right. Um, all of you loaded up with your wonders of magic items that uh, will come in handy probably sometime. Um you make your way to old Astrazalia, and uh, the sun has uh, about almost set all the way below the horizon. Um, and uh, you make it there, um, and you hear, you still hear um, the pounding, the ding, 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 at a slower pace, but still doing it. Let's go inside. All right, you guys enter into the shop. Um, door is already open. Um, but this time it seems that uh, Tavis's father uh, notices you faster and his uh, shirtless form uh, turns. And ah, hello. Uh, nice to see you all again. Uh, Tavis, are you behaving yourself? I am. Very nice. Uh, so, what can I do you all for? Oh, I, I wanted to know, did, uh, have you seen Ekman, the, the Red Tiefling? Has he been around? Ekman? Um, I can't say that I have. Hmm. Okay, just curious. Not a problem, friend. Alright, and I was one, I was hoping, uh, to purchase, uh, two helmets. Helmets. All right. Yes. So, like you want a uh, sort of armor. Uh, they, they don't have to be that much or like that that nice. I, I'm I'm using it for a a magical experiment. Um, what I'm hoping to, to do is to remove a memory block that our party has on on or that that our group has on ourselves. Oh, interesting. Um, well, uh, if you don't, uh, care about the niceties, I have, uh, and kind of looks around, and he, uh, one second, and he walks over, um, into a door to the right, and you hear, <laughs> several, uh, clashing metal sounds as he says, ah, here it is, and just several more, <laughs> Get or got it. Um, uh, and he comes back in the room with two very banged up, sort of, um, round helmets. Uh, and he says, uh, these two, um, I actually had been, um, trying out, uh, a new sort of design and, uh, just didn't like them. You want to just have them? Oh, that would be wonderful. Not a problem. Uh, they are silver. If you need that to know is that. perfect. That is. Mm, drops them in perfect. your hand. Thank you so much, sir. Not a problem. Um, are you guys going back to the the bed and breakfast? Yes, we are. I think, that, I think that's the plan. All right. Uh, let me just. And he grabs the. Um, one of his rods and just douses it in water and then puts one of his other rods back in the fire to keep it burning 
And he says, all right, uh, shop's all tied up. I'll walk back with you. All righty. Sounds good. All right. And he locks up the shop. And you guys all begin walking back. Now that you guys begin walking back, he, uh, um, uh, Tavis's mother, uh, runs up from behind, uh, and says, Oh, hello! Hello! Have you all had a very nice day? A pretty good one. Yep. Got lots done. It was a good day. Tavis showed us around, around town to all these different shops. All right. Very nice. And then she walks up to her husband and wraps her arm around his waist, even though he's very sweaty. Um, and you all continue walking back. Um, Tavis's mother and father um, giving uh, stories about uh, embarrassing stories about Tavis's childhood. Um, the whole way asking you guys about your adventures. Um, how you guys met, what you guys been doing, sort of stuff. And it is up to you how much you want to talk, give them um, to talk about. We met Faye Harris. She's pretty cool. Uh, she doesn't like me. Other stuff happened. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Faye Harris has always been a secluded one. Um, so the more of the intellectual as all of her... Uh, uh, as her uh, brothers and sisters ran around and were... Um, uh, breaking things, she was in her room, um, back from the the college library with books and books and books. We had to t we had to throw her outside sometimes to get her any sun. Sometimes she prefer to be inside. And I can say, being a fellow bookworm, I I completely understand. My mom had to do the same thing. Oh, oh. Well, she looks at Nix and then back. Well, if you both like books, then uh. And, uh, uh, maybe that could be something that you could, um, uh, connect about, if, uh, you got off on the wrong foot, at least. Uh, she takes her studies, uh, very seriously. I prefer experimentation rather than reading. That is one way to do it. Um, Tavis's mom thinks a little bit. Hmm. So what sort of, uh... What sort of things do you experiment with? The current project that I'm working on, uh, there is a mental block that we've found on quite a few people. Um, it's relating to uh, Althator. Oh, um, I'm sorry, what? Okay, so uh, the, you have a mental block on you. Um, oh, interesting. So, so what, what I am... What I'm trying to do is to create, holding up the helmets, using these helmets, I'm going to create something that unlocks the mental block for people that, that wear it. Hopefully I can make it a permanent change. However, I will look into that. Oh, well, um, I didn't know that this was a problem, but uh, I suppose that if you know that it's a problem, then it's a it's a good one to fix. Um, the the college has so many resources. Uh, if you need those, um, I'm sure Merle will help if you explain to him um, anything. And I'm sure that if you hope that well, we could call up any any one of our uh, children who are interested in the intellectual, and they'll be for sh uh, most for sure. Uh, want to help on whatever is happening. I'll be sure to ask if I need some help. All right. You guys continue walking. And eventually, um, as you guys get to know each other and they tell you more stories about uh, Tavis, exceedingly more and more, um, you guys make it to the B&B. Uh, where? You may go to your rooms, or go get, uh, something to eat. Gonna... 
I'm going to go up to my room, put all of my stuff in my portable hole. Then I will go get food. Yeah, sure. Throw things in your portable hole. Portable hole. And close it. You can go downstairs to go get food. Uh, Red, uh, Raul, what were you saying? Uh, I'm going to go give a pina colada pastry to uh, Virgil, Beliona, the old man, whose name I do have written down. I just can't remember it, and I don't want to look for it. Elfri. Uh, Elfri. And if I can find Ekman, cool. If not, that's fine. All right. Uh, you find everyone except for Ekman. Um, and they all happily um, accept your pastries. Uh, Beliana, uh, with her huge Goliath form and all of her markings, look at you with her large, inquisitive eyes and says, Oh, uh, oh, Red Guest, what are these? It's a good food, I hear. Oh. All right. And she bites into it. And her eyes light up and she smiles. This is... I don't know what to think about. And she just goes on explaining how good it is. Um, Virgil grabs it and smashes his face into it. Uh, leaving cream all across his face. And Thellery, much like the older man he is, um, bites into it and takes his time eating it. Um, and he says, Well, uh, I thank you. Uh, it is a, a good pastry. Uh, and I feel a little bit better. Um, uh, right, uh, um, how was your day? Oh, it was pretty good. I met one of Tavis's sisters. We met some strange men. Uh, Ekman might be missing. We found a bookstore that is in two worlds. And I just go on. Oh. oh don't don't forget that we also met my brother. Or one of my brothers. And we met one of uh Tavis's brothers who gossip has a crush on the owner of the or the uh, the owner of the ba- the pastry shop that I got these from. What really? Oh, oh. Really? That's some that's some juicy stuff. Uh, I'd like to go next time, uh, and s- maybe I'll just make my own way over there and uh, see what the what the gossip is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's two gold in case you need it. Oh, uh, I mean, thank you. Oh, uh, thanks, Rickest. How long do I have till these uh, pastries go bad? Uh, probably about a week. Oh, okay, cool. Hmm. Virgil comes up and um. Probably longer if they're in bag of holding. That's true. Maybe. Uh, but Virgil comes up to you and hugs you. Uh, roll a perception check for me. Me. Why, Dice? Uh, 12. Hmm. He comes up to you, and you expect his arms to, like, envelop you at, like, the pivot point of your waist, but he's reaching more to, like, the upper part of your waist now. Which is weird, but you don't see anything different with him. He says, Thanks, Rakas, that was really good. And no problem. Uh, pat pat he smiles at you and then says okay guys let's go downstairs and get food and then he runs downstairs and Beliana says yes and then runs after him and Delary gets up and slowly walks could I insight check that or is it too late now um Virgil yeah that whole interaction yeah, if you want to inside check it, yeah. Come on. Give me your luck, Zach. Bam. 23. Um. Virgil seems genuinely happy. And really excited, like a 
12 year old 13 year old would in this sort of cool new situation he's in hmm compassion great shepherd <laughs> oh and uh you notice that he seems like he might be going through puberty he seems taller probably but I'm hungry <laughs> and I'll go downstairs with the others Go downstairs and join uh, the part of your party that's already at the table. I believe Tibral and Tavis. Uh, what do you guys want to do? I was going to go grab a sandwich and then head up to the room just to read. Grab your sandwich of choice and head up to your room. Uh, and Tomb follows you. And sits on the inside of your room, drawing in his notebook over in the corner as you read and eat your sandwich. Tavis? Uh. Uh. I'm kind of just going to relax a little. It's kind of Uh. I think I'm just going to eat something. Alright. You join everyone else at the table. Um. And all of you are passed out of the various sort of uh, the different sort of menus than before as it is a different time of day um, and Vizaria goes around um, doing that and goes promptly back in the kitchen now dressed in a nice um, sort of blue sweater with a uh, white ribbon at the top that is tucked into um, high waisted black pants and black flats I find the simplest, easiest thing to make on the menu, and I order that. All right, you find, um, we'll say, like, chicken tenders and fries. That's really easy. Or, uh, there is a soup that is, um... Chicken tenders and fries. All right. Because after I eat, I will head upstairs to start working on my stuff. Awesome. Y'all order your prospective dinners and they all appear. They are delicious. And all of you are eating a wonderful meal and enjoying your relaxation time after a wonderful day with friends. And that's where we'll leave tonight's episode. And that was this episode of Audio Adventures. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And most of all, please share to get out the word so we can share our story with you and keep doing what we're doing. If you have an idea for an NPC, a shop, or even an encounter, please comment down below. You might be seeing any of those in the next session or maybe even the upcoming sessions. Again, thank you so much for being here. And we will see you next week. Please stay safe, everyone, and wear those seatbelts.